Hello everyone! Welcome to the first multiplayer battle that's going to uh, feature the new legendary lord for the Von Karsteins or Vampire Counts, Isabella Von Karstein. I'm going to jump into the battle very soon, but first I thought it'd be best to go over what exactly Isabella Von Karstein is in regards to multiplayer. I kind of view her as a mix of Vlad Von Karstein and the Red Duke, because let's take Vlad Von Karstein. He has some basic stuff here, Curse of the Undeath. Uh, this is one of his unique things, which is a leadership aura. But then he also comes with the Hunger and then Master of Beguilement. Vlad von Karstein cannot take any mounts, but is a very tanky hero with a high set of hit points and decent, or actually pretty good melee stats. The Red Duke has higher weapon strength, um, but he can also go on mounts. He also shares the vampire stuff with the Hunger, the Curse of the Undeath, but then he also comes with, you know, a couple of extra abilities, Arcane Conduit, Foe Seeker, and then the Red Fury, Undeath Resurgent, and then his unique thing, El Sif. So, Isabella von Karstein, she can take almost all the mounts, except for the dragon. She is also very good defensively. Um, her hit points are shared with the Red Duke and, like, Manfred von Karstein, because, of course, Vlad has more. Her melee stats here, her melee attack is slightly lower, but her melee defense is higher than the other vampires. Her weapon strength is about on par with most of them. And then for her, she also comes with the Curse of the Undeath and the Hunger, but then like the Red Duke, she comes with the Red Fury and Undeath Resurgent, but then also like Vlad von Karstein, she comes with Master of Beguilement as well. As far as spells, it's just the normal lore that all vampires share, except for, of course, Manfred von Karstein, who thinks he's all popular over there. He's like, oh, look at me, I cast two different lores. Yeah, we know, Manfred, we know. Calm down. Um, and then her unique item is going to be the Blood Chalice of Bathory. So Vlad von Karstein is all about self-healing, but his wife, Isabella, this, when it says greatly, it really does mean greatly. I think it's around two to 3,000 healing within 19 seconds. It is very fast. But this can only target other lords and heroes. You can't use this on any normal unit in the game. Only the heroes and other legendary, or other lords. But holy crap, it heals them back up to full so quickly. It is really good. Um, the Vigor buff is also really good. 36% to your Vigor is a great thing to always have, so you're fighting at your top uh, shape. When you know If you're winded, you can pop this on somebody, whether they're a hero or a lord, and you, can, you, know, you get them back up to um, full strength. So overall, she is slightly more expensive than her husband. She's on par about you know, cost-wise with the Red Duke. I think she's definitely worth the cost. She has decent armor like the other vampires. She has a good set of hit points. Her melee defense is really high at a 65. And again, she has mount options, unlike her... Um, land-based uh, husband there, Vlad, so she can go on a Bard of Nightmare, or of course the Hellseed. I would probably most always recommend the Hellseed because it's one of the fastest things in the game, and you can just go around and drop the, you know, Raise Deads, or line up for Winds of Death, or, you know, whatever you want to do, she can do it. So I think she's a very nice addition, and again, I think she kind of sits between the Red Duke and Vlad von Karstein, um, and still kind of gives them each their own thing. Like, they all still have a spot in the leadership role of the Vampire Counts army, even though they are kind of very similar, you know, she does slightly different things than her husband. The husband is slightly different than, well, actually kind of really different from the Red Duke, but you know what I'm saying. So that is Isabella von Karstein. She is a pretty powerful vampire lord with some, actually really no unique abilities, just a unique item, because again, her abilities are shared amongst other of the um, vampire lords out there. But still, you know, having a Master of Beguilement is always great having an undeath resurgence is great red fury is great like all these are very solid abilities for her and um yeah i think she's a very good good uh, addition to the vampire count roster so let's now jump into a battle where i'm going to be bringing her against the bretonians and so there is the lady herself isabella von karstein mounted on a hell steed for this battle and again i'm facing off against bretonia uh, we can actually first play here. I brought two Blood Knights and then the main battle line of four Skeletal Warriors, two on each side. And then the core is going to be three Grave Guard, one of which is going to be the Sternsman. I brought the Call and the Gash and then a Banshee to try and snipe potential uh, Grail Relics. Or uh, also just bring, you know, a unit that has Fear and Terror along with the Claw and the Gash. So I'm going to be moving our Cav, including Isabella, over here. The spells that I brought for Isabella is going to be Invocation of the Heck, Raise Dead, and then um, Winds of Death. So... I'm not saying there's a wind's death in this battle, but, you know, just keep a lookout. Uh, for the Bretonian army, we have two Grail Knights being led by uh, Count Albrecht, or Lord Albrecht de Bordelow over here in the woods. Main battle line of Men at Arms with Pole Arms. Two of the Peasant Bowmen with Fire Arrows, which are a really good pick against Vampire Counts. Two Foot Squires, a Blessed Trebuchet, and then two Knights Errant over there. So, obviously, I don't know about the Cav hitting in the forest right now, but now I do. I'm going to be able to see both of them, including their lore, because I'm looking exactly for the Grail Knights. I thought maybe there'd be some hiding in this forest. Meanwhile, my army is just going to be slowly approaching from this way. I think I'm going to form a line about, like, right here. 
And these peasant bowmen, they are going to do so much damage to my Claw and Nagash. Like, it's kind of ridiculous. They are really good pick against Claw and Nagash. So over here, the Grail Knights, now that I have seen that they are there, I was getting my Blood Knights closer to the forest to try and lure them out. And that is exactly what we're going to do. So the Grail Knights are going to start charging our Blood Knights. And I'm going to try and get Isabella over here to summon some zombies to halt their charge. You can see they're going to go into a lance formation, which actually slows them down a little bit. And so now we're going to catch them here with a quick zombie summon. So that's going to kind of halt a lot of their charge, but uh, they still get a little bit through, though. So we're going to charge here, and I'm going to cast Invocation of the Heck on this Blood Knight because it's going to be taking most of the damage. And then I'm going to be charging in these um, Blood Knights as well. Then I'm going to go over the army, cast Red Fury on a Blood Knight, and then Undeath Resurgent on this group to try and win the battle against the Grail Knights. And you just see how quickly we were winning this fight. The Blood Knights were negating a lot of the damage from the Grail Knights because of Invocation of the Heck. And they were, of course, buffing them up with the Undeath Resurgent. This one has the Red Fury. So that's helping them against their Grail Knight. And we just massacre these poor Grail Knights. And Albrecht kind of got in there a little late. So now we're going to switch, swift our, switch our attention to the Lord Albrecht as our army is now going to get in range of theirs. You can see um, the Claw and the Gash is down to about half health here just by getting hit by these two peasant bows with, with uh, fire arrows. So I'm going to try and silence one with the Banshee as the main army is going to be pouring in here. I'm going to get the Claw and the Gash um, and Invocation of the Heck here soon because it is just dying to these uh, peasant bowmen. It is insane how much damage they do. It's really good. As we are chasing the Lord into the woods, my Blood Knights are going to kind of hang out here for a little bit as I'm micromanaging Isabella, and then I'm trying to give an individual attack orders to our army. But you can see our Skeleton Warrior is going to get into these peasant bowmen here. Sterns are going to get into these peasant bows here. I think the um, my opponent was too concerned about what was happening in the background, so they did not pull out their peasants quick enough here. So right here, we're going to cast an invocation on the heck and pull the Claw and the Gash out of combat to try and make sure that they it continues to live. Meanwhile, we are dealing with their men in arms over here. And right now, I'm trying to line up a Winds of Death initially right here. Then I was going to line up a Winds of Death right here. So I'm about to move into range to do that. But then they're going to start moving their foot squires when I'm about ready to cast it. So I'm going to have to move her again and do another Winds of Death. At this time, the two Knights Aaron are going to be coming out here and dealing with our Banshee and our Skeletal Warriors. Seeing them come out of the forest because I didn't know they were there. I'm now going to get our Blood Knights out of this forest, and we're going to try and do rear charges on the Blessed Field Trebuchet and on this pack of forces right here. And I'm also lining up for, you know, a particular spell, because there's a lot of units just kind of sitting right here. So I was like, ah, let's, let's have some fun. And we had some fun. Oh boy, did we have some fun. And now the Blood Knights are going to be coming out of the forest. Meanwhile, the Claw and the Gash is now decently healed up with that invocation. The heck, if I didn't cast it on it, it would have probably been dead without that invocation. Going to run into this battle here to try and do its AoE damage. Meanwhile, on the right flank, we have now wiped up what peasants were there. So we're going to be getting these forces over here. I'm just kind of keeping Isabella safe and plopping up Raise Dead where she's needed. I think I only cast one Raise Dead at this point in the battle. Or maybe two. I can't remember. Uh, Blood Knights came in for a rear charge. It's going to basically shatter this group of the left flank of the Bretonian Peasants. This knight uh, destroyed the Blessed Trebuchet. Over here, we're going to land Isabella into these Foot Squires as we get our other Skeletal Warriors over here. And we're going to assist these Grave Garden Skeletal Warriors. And then we're going to pull the Claw and the Gash, I think, back into that battle. But it was taking a lot of damage from the Foot Squires. Over here, nice Aaron came back from a quick route, so we're going to reroute them with the Blood Knights, and that is going to shatter them, and that is going to be a victory for Isabella von Karstein. So, a good game to my opponent, um, Ben Ben Gienz, Ben Gienz. The Grail Knights did not have much of a chance. In a 1v1 situation, I want to say the Blood Knights still win, but the Grail Knights do put up a really good fight against Blood Knights. But the thing is, they didn't have a Life Lore Damsel here, so I had Invocation of the Heck. I also had the buff of Undeath Resurgence. I had the Zombies casting to try and halt their charge, also deal damage, and just kind of annoy them in general. So those Grail Knights coming out of the woods was a, was not necessarily a mistake, because again, they can deal with Blood Knights pretty well. I think they do eventually lose, even without the help of Invocation, they would still lose. Um, so it was a good idea to try and get them and then have Albrecht come in there and try to win. But the thing is, when you're supported by a vampire leader who can cast Invocation and, you know, zombies and stuff, then it's going to, you know, tilt the battle into our favor. If they had a damsel casting, like, Regrowth on a Grail Knight, then that could have been a different story. Because Regrowth is really good. You know, it blocks damage and also does vast healing, so that's really good. I really think Damsel of Life Lore should be in most um, Bretonian armies. Because the Life Lore is just so powerful in this game. At least for multiplayer. Uh, but you can see Isabella von Karstein netting 172 kills. Most of that you can guess from what that was, the Red Death. Banshee getting 17 kills against some Bretonian peasants and doing fear and terror in the area around her.
Skeletal Warriors did okay. Graveguard did okay. Wow. 38, 38, and 33. They did all about the same. The Blood Knights just wreaked havoc. And then the Claw and the Gash took a lot of fire from the Bretonian Peasants and the Blessed Field Trebuchet, but still managed to live throughout the battle. This is a very solid unit. And man, do those Bretonian Peasants with fire arrows just knock it down. Such a good pick against um, the Vampire Counts there. For the Lord of Bordello and Vengeance here, we have a, the front line of Men at Arms doing okay, but fighting Graveguard and Skeletal Warriors is not really what they're meant for, so I feel they would have done a little bit better if these were just like Foot Squires or maybe just a massive amount of Men at Arms or even just Peasant Mobs. Uh, the Foot Squires, they got into the battle kind of late and they got rear charged by Blood Knights, so they didn't really have much of a chance at that point, and the Peasant Bows kind of got killed early on too. And then we saw what happened to the poor knights. And these knight errant, man, they charged my left flank just in time for that Winds of Death to come in and just uh, just give them a bad time. And the Blessed Field Trebuchet was uh, targeting the Claw and the Gash the whole game. That's why it does not have a single kill. If it was targeting like the Stern Spin or the Grave Guard or something like that, then it probably had more of an impact. Uh, the re it would have been really good if they got my Claw and the Gash down, but it didn't. So it was kind of a, I wouldn't say a waste, but... It maybe anyway good game to my opponent there and let's go watch a cinematic view of isabella versus the uh, lord bordello the march of the grail knights it's kind of funny just how much these grail knights did not care about those zombies they just kind of ran right through them Run, Bretonian Lord! The casual walk of the Graveguard. I still in the claw and a gash there. Night comes. Swiftly. I am I don't want to miss the um I think it's coming up here. Yeah, because there's the knights. <laughs> Not many of those people got back up. God, that's always so fun to see. Oh man, Winds of Death, why are you so good? And then the Blood Knights. That's gonna be it. God, that went to death. Oh, it doesn't beat the one I, I pulled off against the dwarves. That was probably that was a few weeks ago now, but man, that dwarf one was really good.
I think we got like 400 kills off that one. But anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the debut of Isabella von Karstein. Again, I think she is a super solid lord, much like the other vampire lords in the Vampire Count army. And I will see you all next time. Take care, everyone.